Well, there, it, it's important to, to see that in Genesis 15, for example, where the promise is made of, an, of a temporal people and a temporal nation, temporal land, you also have the promise of a, a far greater reality that transcends it. Not just that God will bring the physical descendants of Abraham back to that land on which he's lying 400 years later, which he did, uh, but that, that even something greater will happen down the road, namely that through him and his seed, his, his heir, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. So you have two promises there in Genesis 15. That twofold promise uh, sort of uh, goes all the way through the Old Testament until you do get to the New Testament in Jeremiah 31, where God says through Jeremiah, the new covenant will not be like that covenant that Israel swore at Mount Sinai when it pledged to be God's holy nation. Uh, when, when the new covenant is inaugurated, it's going to be the blessing, that greater blessing of all of the families of the earth through Abraham's greater son. And Jesus Christ is that greater son. And that's why the, the Apostle Paul, for example, says, in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile. He calls the church the Israel of God. Uh, Peter applies terms that were only used of the nation of Israel in the Old Testament to the New Testament church, calling it a holy nation, uh, a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession. And so it's not that God has rejected the physical descendants of Abraham, it's that the way into that everlasting promised land was never on the basis of physical, uh, ethnic heritage or obedience to the law. It was always through faith in Jesus Christ. Now Christ has come, and that wall between Jew and Gentile has been broken down. If that wall between Jew and Gentile has been broken down, then that means as Hebrews uh, 8 tells us, that old covenant is now obsolete. The nation of Israel broke those national promises that were only temporary and conditional on Israel's obedience. God cast Israel out of the land, and the only way into the everlasting land, beyond that sliver of real estate in the Middle East, but the, the whole earth that belongs to the Lord, in the age to come is, th is through faith in Jesus Christ.